I want to have a caveat, in other words, a little preface to this, uh, that what I'm about to show you on one level is depressing, but I don't want you to get depressed because by being depressed, you only make yourselves another victim in the long list of victims to Iblis. Because Iblis wants to depress us, he wants to fill us with grief and despair. So I want that caveat, but I also want to say this. I have been studying the religion for, I think, a relatively long time. And I've come to my own conclusions about certain things. But I recognize that a lot of these things are ishtihadat. People have differences of opinion. And so I really want people to understand that what I'm saying, you can take it with you if you see benefit in it, or you can leave it. I'm not going to argue with anybody. I don't believe in argumentation. Uh, the Imam Malik said, argumentation has no place in this religion. Ulama can debate amongst themselves. Uh, it's haram for common people to argue about the religion, and it's considered makru for the ulama to have uh, these type of polemical debates. But people can write things if they want. I would much rather read a refutation that's written than get into an argument with somebody. So, like I said, you can take this uh, for what it's worth. I think all of us recognize that the planet is definitely having problems. And so what I'd like to do is talk about what happens when worlds wither away. What happens when we see things in the natural kingdom disappearing, qualities in human beings that are also disappearing, and talk about guidance in these latter days. What is the purpose of human existence? One of our great scholars, Raghab Risfahani, well known for his tafsir, well known for his dictionary on the meanings of the Quranic words, one of the great moral ethicists of the Islamic tradition, he wrote a famous book, at Dhari'ah, in Makarim al-Shari'ah. It was one of Imam al-Ghazali's favorite books. In fact, Imam al-Ghazali read it and they said that he never traveled without it. In that book, he says that there are three reasons for the creation of this species, the human species. And what's beautiful about this distinction is that it allows for purposeful existence for not just Muslims, but for peoples of other beliefs or even people without belief. The first one he said is for Imara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hu ansha'akum min al-ardi wa sta'amarakum fiha. He brought you forth from the earth and then استعمركم فيها أريف سينتا in the Arabic يفيد الطلب that he placed you to cultivate the earth. Here uh, Yusuf Ali says settled you therein but it really means to cultivate the earth. They called the colonization of the Muslim world استعمار. Unfortunately it was a bad تعريب. It shouldn't have used that word. It was really should have been called استخراب but they called it استعمار. So استعمار is a very positive word in the Quranic terminology, and we should re, uh, retake that word. The second reason is ibadah. Now, the first can be for ibadah also by niyyah. So if you're cultivating the earth with the niyyah of ibadah, with the intention of worship, then it becomes worship. But for those people who are cultivating the earth, we eat rice that was cultivated by Buddhists rice that was cultivated by mushrikeen. So they're still, they have a purpose in the imarat al-ard, in cultivating the earth, and we benefit from that. The second is, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We only created the jinn, the unseen beings of the unseen realm, and the, and the human beings, to worship us. Ibn Abbas said, لِيَعْرِفُونَ To know us. And to know God is to love God. So it can also mean to love us, to adore us. Abada is, people who know Arabic know that, that, uh, that ubudiyah is one of the levels of mahabba, of love. It's a type of love. And the last reason is the khilafah. He makes you khulafa. He made us khulafa and then the caliph is the one who stands in place of somebody else. He's left behind khalafahu. He's left behind to stand in his place. So it's a steward that he may see what you do. Allah knows 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said to the angels, Inni ja'ilun fil arti khalifa, I'm putting into the earth a caliph. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Dawood, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum bayna al-nasi bil haqqi, wa la tattibi' al-hawa, fayudillaka an sabili Allah. So he said, O oh Dawood, we have made you a caliph in the earth. This is the second type of khilafah. There are two types of khilafah. The first one is to rule yourself. And the other is to rule others. But the condition of ruling others is that you rule yourself. And so here Dawood is being told, you are, we have put you in the earth to rule others. He was made a ruler over Bani Israel. So judge amongst them with the truth. And then it says, الْهَوَى In other words, you have to rule yourself in order to rule others. Because if you don't, the fa there is sababiyya, فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The fa is for causation. So because if you do not, if you follow your caprice, your whims, your appetites, then it will lead you astray from the path of God. So what is man as caliph and how are we doing? Allah says in the Quran, 